Well, good afternoon, YouTube. And look at what a beautiful Lincolnshire skyline we have. So what's happened? I remembered that this is on a trolley and I moved it into the middle. So we're gonna get some wiring. We're gonna get some steering column action, some handbrake action in today. We may even do a bit of investigating with what I think is a Malpassi filter king with a regulator in it, which would be amazing if it is. And a faucet fuel pump. And also a miracle's happened. Um, I've managed to managed to come back into the garage and yeah, suddenly there's clearance. I found this. It's out on top. There's clearance there, so the magic hammer fairies have been and they absolutely haven't just walloped the shit out the bottom of that arm. Um because that wouldn't be very Lotus-like, but it's a fucking gap. There's a fucking gap there too, so we're all hot to trot. The um, CV boot clips haven't arrived, so that's not going to be done this time. Um, thermostat housing has arrived, but it's not here in the garage, so I can't show it to you. Um, but yeah, concentrating on this today, so... I've got my soldering iron. I'm not going to put it off any longer. I'm going to get the wiring done, handbrake and column, and then that will be it for today. So a short video after the monster half hour one. Okay, so I'll give you an idea of what's gone on down here. I um, These were wrapped underneath part of the chassis, so losing patience with when I was taking the body off, I just chopped through them. So. I've just given them a quick degrease and a clean so I can see that one goes there. These two bad boys go on there. And that is the red one which goes there. So I'm going to chop this connector out fully. And then I'm going to utilise one of the connectors off the Range Rover, solder it in so we've got a nice clean um, connection and disconnection point because these. Oh, I don't want to trust them. I don't want to trust them. If I get really adventurous, I may take this earth block out as well and uh, put a connector in. But um, this wiring isn't going to be here forever. I will reloom this car probably next winter. But baby steps, it's going to do for another year. It's done for, was it 1969? 52 years. It will do another 12 months. So um, I'll cut now and then I will show you some of my, my soldering. Okay, well that idea lasted all of two minutes. I haven't got any bloody heat shrink. But what I do have is these reasonably high quality connectors. So um, I'm just gonna connect these and I have a nice set of crimps as well. So, um, so yeah, I'll proceed henceforth. I'll see if I can get the camera set up so you can get bored watching me do this. Right. So apart from hurting my back being bent over, we've got them all connected. Well, we've got them all there. Um, just need a bit of heat shrink and then plugging in. But my fancy crimpers just didn't crimp enough. Um, so I have to get the basic old farm ones out and they seem to have done the job. Um, one thing I did notice is a lot of the wires, you won't be able to see them now, but they're very black. Um, so that will be corrosion creeping up. So they're, they're not long for this world, but they will do for now. These random strays, these are purple. So they are the horn, but I has aftermarket horn, so these are not used. So um, yeah, I'm gonna plug these in, leave them alone and tick that job off the list. And then I will, once the chassis is on, I will go and tidy everything up. I've got a load of Tezza tape. I'll tidy all this wiring up and just make it look a little bit neater. 
but um, yeah, I'm not going to put too much effort into it. If we do this, no one will ever know the horrors that I've just committed. Right, onto the inside. Take you, it'll be helpful. And because I'm getting old, I need, I need, my fucking, oh, there it is. Oh, I've parked the trainer on top of it. Uh, yes. My little kneeler. Right. So, what is the plan, I hear you say? So, having read the manual, this is the impact connector, impact joint, whatever. So, this needs to come off completely, and then that will separate the lower steering column from the upper and then the inner steering column should just pull out um that easy apparently and the handbrake which we will do first now it's not in there oh, where did i put the bloody handbrake ah, up here now i've looked at a few pictures of these and my spring is there and it needs to be in between that bit of steel and that bit of brass so I'm going to put my gloves on do that there you see the spring there it's in the wrong place and then hopefully that should slot in be right back well ladies and gents we have a winner handbrake is back in oh, unless I pull it out too far there it goes all the way in Click, click. Back in it goes. So, uh, yeah, pleased with that. All working. Obviously, just need to connect it up, but can't do that until it is back in the car. And as they say, a little knowledge goes a long way. Here is the steering wheel and the inner, not lower, the inner column removed. And that came out. I mean, it was literally 30 seconds. So I undid the uh, impact joint which connects the lower, um, here we go, the lower column. That slid out easily. And then this just pulled out of the inside. So you see here, this is where the nylon bearing sits. Apparently they wear, which causes looseness. Um, so I'm gonna measure those, but also if you look down the column, you can see the the first nylon bushing, and then at the other end, you see the second. So if this silver cap doesn't come off, I will drift them from this angle, drift them out with a 19 mil socket, I think I saw mentioned online. And um, then we will look at getting a set of calipers on here and seeing if if that has worn away, because if it has, no amount of new bushes, or terrible English, you know, no new bush is going to stop the slack. So we'll either have to make a bush or see if there's a replacement or something. But progress is progress. So I'm going to go and, well, you may as well join me on an adventure across the garage to my... Diminishing box of bits to fit. Every day we seem to fit more bits. So here we go, here are the replacement ones. Um, why don't we slide them on here and see if there is, there is any play. Oh, here we go. I'll bring this out and put this down on my mat. So, there's play there. There's play there, there's play all the way down the bloody shaft. See that? That is what is giving the steering wheel a load of movement. So you imagine the force you feel at the edge of the rim not good so 
we need another solution. So how do we solve this? I have no idea. I mean, oof. do you buy a solid lump of PTFE? Is that what it's called? And then, I don't know, kind of mill it, is it mill or lathe it or turn it, turn it down so it fits inside the the outer shaft, but has a tighter fit. But yeah. This plate all the way down the shaft, so these ain't these ain't gonna cut it. So what to do, what to do, what to do. I'm gonna do some research first and foremost, and I'm gonna get my calipers out and give it a bit of a measure. See you on the other side. All right, so answers on a postcard, how I solve this. I'm going to, um, I'm gonna put some brain power into it and move on to the next bit that I can get on with, which is the, uh, just whipping this this out and having a quick investigation. I'm gonna buy some bobbins for this because it's becking noisy. And this is gonna get a new filter and hopefully I can address the pressure because the new carbs, which I've ordered, are um, three PSI. So yeah, if we can get three PSI, that'd be great. And then that's pretty much all I can do for the time being. Um, then I'm waiting for bits to arrive, which is sort of exciting. Right. Lovely, we do have a, what looks like a genuine Mal Apassi Filter King. So um, I can't see any markings on it. Tell me if it's a certain size, but it's got a load of shite at the bottom. So we'll go and buy a service kit for that. Um, it's obviously set for carb, so I don't think three PSI will be a problem. So that's good, that's great news. Um, the facet fuel pump, I think these are fairly standard connectors, so I will be um, ordering a bobbin kit for that. And yeah, might give this a bit of a, a bit of a tidy up, maybe give it a lick of paint, make it a little bit more inviting and welcoming. Um, but not too much because obviously it's a shoddy car and kind of the boot being the nicest part of it. But um, yeah, I think that brings me to the end of today. There's not a lot more I can really do. I've got to order some bits and figure out how to fix that steering column. Um, yeah, so uh, I might be back tomorrow or I might just put this video straight out. Who knows? Life's a mystery. Catch you later. Oh. Nothing like sitting in a garage just looking at the car. It's strange to think that hopefully in a month or so this will be MOT'd and driving under its own steam. You wouldn't think it to look at it now. I'm also thinking low battery go away. Do I invest a bit of time and paint the inside of the arches or do I not bother? Do I paint the bumpers and the roof gold? Mm, possibly. Possibly. Anyway, um, yeah, I know I'd said I'd finish the video, but I uh, had a call and I sat down on the floor and I was uh, just admiring the view, so I thought you guys would like to as well. And obviously, the P38, looking all moody in the background. That's about to go to the scrapyard. Sayonara.